Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com and in today's video, which is sponsored by my good friends at Squarespace, we're going to be learning how to add some nice printed graphic details to a product using a single black and white texture. We're also going to do a quick modeling exercise by creating this coffee cup, but the methods we cover are the same no matter what object you're adding graphics to. So let's get started. All right, so I'm in my basic scene here. I'm gonna press A to select everything and X to delete it. So we have a nice clean scene. And I'm gonna press Shift A and add in a cylinder. And before I click anywhere else down here in the left, I don't need 32 vertices because I'm gonna be doing a lot of subdivision. So I'm just gonna set that to something like 18. And that's also gonna give us a nice flat side right here on the X axis to add our handle. So tabbing into edit mode, I'm gonna make sure this is about the shape I want. I don't want it quite so fat. So I'm gonna press S and Shift Z to scale that inwards just a little bit, something like that. And then I need to make a place where I can put that handle. So I'm gonna press Control R to add in an edge loop. And I'll actually just add the one right here. And then I'll press Control B to bevel outwards. And this will be sort of the two places where my handle will start and finish something like that. Then in edge select mode, I'm gonna select these two rings and bevel them one more time, control B. And now that I have some nice geometry to work with for my handle, I'm gonna select these two faces right here and have the handle come out from right there. So I'll press E and then just push that out on the X axis a little bit, something like that. And then we just need to bridge these together. So the way I'm gonna do that is going into my front view, I'm just going to go into X-ray, select this one, and then press control and right click and that will allow me to sort of just extrude a handle outwards. And then when I get towards the end here, I'm just going to select both those two faces, press Control E, and then I can bridge edge loops, and that will tie those together. Now it's looking a little funky, so you may just want to go in and just shape this out a little bit more to get it to your liking. I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna press Control and two to add in a subdivision surface modifier with two levels. And we can right click and shade this smooth. Now I need to make the hole in the top, obviously. So I'm gonna select this top face, press I to inset it, and then just extrude it down once, and then extrude it down one more time. Now the reason I did two extrudes there was just to create this little edge loop right there. So we have a little bit more control over this lip. Now down in the bottom of the cup, I'm gonna inset this face as well so that we don't have that pinching effect right here. So let's press I to inset that, and one more time for good measure. So it's nice and flat on the bottom. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's do the same thing down here. And I'm gonna pull this one up just a little bit. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit more shaping up around this rim to get it looking a little bit more square. And to make these handles look a little bit more glued on, I'm just going to add in an edge loop here and then kind of scale that out a little bit and then push this one in right there and scale that out a little bit. I'm just looking at a reference coffee cup sitting on my desk right now, and that's kind of how it might look like if it was created with clay separately and then sort of pressed on there and attached with slip. And maybe we add in one more edge loop down here just to give this a little bit of a sharper bottom. And that's looking pretty good. We have our coffee cup shape, which now we can apply some graphics to. So now I just want to build out a very simple little scene so that we can have some lighting here and start to work on that graphic. All right, you custom coffee cup connoisseurs, let's talk about websites and what you can do to create one that looks super sick and is super easy to set up. To put it simply, Squarespace. Squarespace is your go-to website builder for creating portfolios, online shops, event pages, and more. With their vast array of gorgeous and ready-to-go templates, you can get moving in no time. I built my first website with Squarespace and I can safely say that having a site is what really kickstarted my freelance career. Gave me a nice place to show my work and also gave clients a place to reach out using the contact form templates. Get a website to call your own and don't wait another minute. Right now you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by heading over to squarespace.com slash Dirk. Link is in the description. Definitely check it out. Now let's get back to the video. So now that we have our simple scene built out, I'm going to select the coffee cup 
and let's start adding some materials to it. So I'm gonna go into my shader editor here in this new window that I had created, add a new material, and I'm gonna make that just a red material. Of course, this is all up to your preference at this point, but I think a red will look nice and be very dirty. And we'll turn the roughness down on this a little bit, maybe something like that, I think will look pretty good. Just so we have sort of a nice coated ceramic. Let's also add in a camera to the scene just while we're putting this all together. And I'll set a render border so that we're not rendering outside. So to now add the graphic to this, I'm going to select the principled shader here and then press Control T, which will add a few nodes here. If you weren't able to do that, you may not have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which you can enable, enable just by searching for it right here. And it automatically comes with Blender. You don't need to download anything. So it turns pink because it's missing a texture. So what I want to do now is navigate to where I have a texture saved. So the texture will automatically be mapped with the UVs that the object already has, which you can see are very stretched and messed up because those are all just inherited from the cylinder. So you can see where it's on the cylinder, it looks okay, um, but where we added more pieces, it's not looking very good. So let's open yet another window here and we'll make this a UV image editor. And let's select our image. Now, usually when I'm working with a sticker sheet method, which is what I like to call this, I like to just basically um, tab into edit mode, press A to select everything, and then U and do the smart UV project just so that we have UVs for everything. And I'll just scale those down and sort of move it into a white area because that's where I'm gonna bring back my red color and we won't have any of that printed graphic effect. So then we could go in and add a lot of seams to unwrap this whole cup, but I'm really just interested in putting the graphic in a few different areas here. So I'm gonna select a face here and then control and click just to kind of move around the outside, selecting an area where I want this dirk graphic. And then what I can do is just press U and unwrap. And we'll want to make sure we use this use subdivision surface option. And that will avoid some stretching that sometimes we'll get. So then we'll just rotate this into the proper area, scale it to the size we want, something like that I think looks good. Just gonna kind of have that wrap right around. And that's looking pretty nice, I like that. Now just for a little fun, we could also unwrap maybe this area right here. So let's just select these and then press U and unwrap. Again, making sure our U subdivision service is on and we can just move this to right there. And we have a nice little detail on the handle right there. So now let's get back to this material a little bit. For, for one thing, I wanna bring back my colors. So I'm just going to disconnect this real quick because I like that red I had before. So I'm gonna press Control C, copy it, and then I'll connect this back up. Now the reason I copied it is because what I'm gonna do now is add in a color ramp. Let's drop that right there. And then so right now the black is on this end, the white is on this end. So I want the white areas to be that red color. So let's press Control V to paste. And then I don't want the text to be black. I prefer it be white. I'm going to bring the value all this all the way up so that we have a nice white color there. So now there's a few more fun things that we can do with this simple black and white texture. The first is going to be to add a little bit of a raised up bump to our print. I'm going to drag the color input into this normal option here and that's going to go crazy but I need to add in a vector bump. I'll drop that right there and then plug this into the height instead of the normal input. Now you can see already that we have a little bit of a bumped up feature there. Now this is a little bit grainy just because of the scale of the image I'm using. The higher resolution image you use will look better, but also we can play with these distance and strength values to have that not be so severe. So I'm going to type the distance in to be maybe a 0.1 and then we have control over the strength as well. You can kind of see what that effect is doing. Now it's going kind of pressed in a little bit right now, but I'd really have it go, rather have it go out. So I can just use this invert option and that will kind of create that effect for us. And you can see that that's happening over here on the handle as well. Just a very simple little bumped out effect right there. So with that looking good, we can also use this texture to control the roughness a little bit. So let's say, you know, maybe we want part of the mug to be shiny and another part to be not shiny. So what I could do is use this color input and then plug that into the roughness. So now what that's gonna do is make the printed area very shiny because that was a black value, which corresponds to a value of zero and white is one. So that's the rest of the mug, which is very rough right now. Now I kind of like this look, but I don't want it so severe. So I'm gonna add in a converter map range, which is gonna take the black and white values 
0 to 1, and we can remap them to new values. So I don't want anything to be totally shiny. So I'm going to bring the minimum up a little bit, and that's our white texture right here. We could see this a little bit easier if it's black. So let's just set that to black for a second. So you can see that this minimum value is controlling the black values. So we have separate control over that. So I can put that at something like a 0.15. And then the outside, I still want to be a little bit shiny, but not quite so shiny as the printed area. Something like that I think looks pretty good. And now we sort of have that nice printed effect on our mug. And we can change this back to a white or really whatever other color you want. So now if we back, look back in our cam, camera view, we can select this mug and yeah, just kind of play with it. You can find a nice angle for it, rotate it a little bit, and you've got that nice printed effect right on there that's ready to go for whatever type of mock-up you might be creating or something like that. Maybe we pull this out a little bit. Maybe we set this to be a square and we could even extend this down to be a little bit more of a table pop type look. Now let's say we wanted the inside of our coffee cup to all be white. What we could do is just go into the edit mode here and then just press control plus to grow this selection. And then I'm just going to take all of these pieces that I'm selecting right now and then move them into a black area. So again, they already have UVs. I'm gonna scale it way down and put it into a black area. And just like that, the inside of the cup is now white. We could do the same thing on the bottom. And now we just have some nice other little details that we can kind of play with. And for extra credit, you could even make a little bit of a glass coffee cup. You could have the color also affect the transmission value. Plug that in right there. And then we would want the white areas now to be very shiny, not rough. So let's turn those down to zero. And then the printed area would be a little bit darker. And we could change the color of the red area to instead be a white so that it's nice and bright. And just like that, we've got a little bit of a glass coffee cup, which then we could make the interior also be the whiter color by moving that out of the black area. And now we've got sort of a cool bumped out printed effect on a glass mug. And that looks pretty darn cool. But anyways, I hope you all had fun with this video, learning how to add some simple graphics with a little bit of bumped upness and roughness variation. Um, this full file will be available on my Patreon if you want to check that out. Um, but anyways, like and subscribe. Thanks for being here. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, which should be coming pretty soon. Thanks again.